Hi, my name is Bearded Thinker and welcome to the first video in series about Home Assistant running on Synology. The reason for filming this series is a great experience I have with my own home setup, but also some differences uh, between my setup and other videos and instructions available on the internet. Most of those setups really do work great, but I find my setup a bit easier to maintain control and run both from inside my home, but also from the outside. Please note, I will not go here in details of setting up external access, as this can be very dangerous to expose your home and attached devices to potential attackers. If you want to get external access, easiest and least painful way would be to use Home Assistant Cloud by Nabucasa. And by doing so, your, your subscription will also help finance this wonderful project development. This video isn't sponsored in any way, but I must thank Techom Trade, a local creation Synology partner, for borrowing me this RS814 Plus uh, NAS device. I just have to be very fast and record all I want before I have to return it back. Thank you. So let's start. First thing we have to do is of course sign into the Synology device. Then we want to make sure that we have a Docker, a Docker application installed. So we go to Package Center, look at Installed packages as we don't have it we have to download and install docker just click install and follow the on-screen instructions depending on the speed of your internet link and synology device you're running this can be over in a few minutes Next step is to connect via SSH to Synology device. I use PuTTY for this uh, if I work on my Windows uh, computer. A link to download page, if you don't have it, is listed in the description. Also, if you haven't connected via terminal before, you need to enable it in a Synology device. For this, we have to go to Control Panel, Terminal, sorry, we have to go to Advanced Mode, to Terminal and SNMP, and then we have to tick a box next to enable SSH service. Click apply. And that's it. Okay. So let's go. In host name or IP address, we need to enter the local IP address of our uh, Synology device. This is 192.168.1.109 for me. Next, uh, I will save this uh, login information for the next time so we can connect more easily. So I'll call this bearded server because I always light beards on my server. Okay, and let's connect. If this is the first time you have been connected to your Synology device via terminal, you may be presented with the question asking if you want to accept or not key provided by the device. Just press yes here. Okay, so we have to type our credentials and those are for me, this one. Um, remember, your, your user that you will be using to log in to the Synology device has to have administrative rights, so you can create a new user, just add it to the user group. Let me show where you can do this. Okay, let me first log in here. My password. As you can see, you cannot see the password being typed. That's the Linux thing, so if you haven't seen it before, no worries, that's normal, just press enter and you will be inside. Let me just go and check into the control panel um, if this user is in the uh, administrative group or not, okay? 
as you can see, Bearded Thinker user is in the administrative uh, group, also users group. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please disable the guest login account and good practice and what I always do on my Synology devices when I configure them, uh, I also disable the admin account. Uh, but I do have personalized admin account created for each user that needs uh, those rights. So that's the best practice and the easiest way to uh, limit the number of potential uh, break-ins into your system. Okay, let's jump back to this screen. First, we need to agree on the folder structure. I will show you what I normally do, as I see it as the best practice. Uh, Linux system is what is behind the Synology device. So every Synology device is based on the Linux. It just has nice graphical user interface that you access via a web browser. But underneath, you will see plain old Linux. One of the folders here that we will be using is called Volume 1. In Volume 1, um, you can find other folders that are available to end user. As you can see, other folders, for example, configuration folders, devices, etc. Those folders are not visible through normal Synology user interface. So if we go to volume one folder and do a list, here we see potential folders that can be seen by uh, end user. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have the Docker folder. And we will go now inside this folder. And see that it is empty. If we open the file station, you will see that in root we have Docker folder. And inside it is empty. So our goal here is to create a local Synology directory that will be accessible through file station or some other means. And that also, uh, folder also will be used as a holder for all the configuration files, plugins, and other add-ons that we add on our Hob Assistant. In order to do that, we will go back once again to our terminal, type mkdir to make directory or make folder and name it Home Assistant. If we check now, we can see that we have here a folder com called Home Assistant. Also, if we go back into the Synology, we can refresh this page and see that we now have additional folder created here. Okay, and believe it or not, we are almost done with the installation of the uh, Home Assistant inside Docker on Synology. And last thing we have to do now is type in very long command this command will also be included in the description of this video, so you can copy it from there. But I will go through step by step uh, in every part of this command. First, we have to type sudo. Sudo is something like super user do or substitute user do, depending on where do you search for it or is this definition old or new. But it really means that this command has to be run as super user, as a root user, with higher administrative privileges. Okay, next command is docker run. After that, we have to uh, tell the name of the docker we are going to create. In this case, this will be name. Home assistant. And this will name the docker we are now creating name of home assistant. After that, we are going to insert this command. This command tells Docker to run it in daemon mode. Uh, this means that even if we close this window that will be running it now, the application will be still running in the background. So we are kind of creating a service that runs independently of any user interaction on this side. We will do this command, restart on failure. 
This command tells Docker to restart if there is any critical er error in the system and the system stops for the Docker container. Um, what does this mean that even if there is some critical error in or bug in the system that will halt uh, the activity of the Docker container, the Docker will restart. There is but there. If there is a serious error or serious critical problem, you can see a loop happening. So system starts, bumps into the error, restarts and do it over and over and over again. But more or less, I have been using it in a lot of other dockers for years and it's really running nicely. Okay, now we will define a network. On most of videos on the YouTube or instructions you see, you will see this defined as net host, which means that we want this Docker to be using host network or host IP address. Uh, I will not go into details of how Docker's work, but when you create Docker, Docker also creates internal network. It's in my case here on the computer network starting with 172. And all the other Dockers are inside that network and they can easily access one other. Also, you can then map external and internal ports of the host uh, in the Docker with the host system, in this case Synology. But now we are saying, no, forget your local network, we want to use network from the Synology device. This command now defines ports. Standard port for Home Assistant is port 8123, and we, we are here mapping external 8123 with the internal 8123 of Docker. This means that we are mapping Synology 8123 uh, ports with the internal port of the Docker container. But since we are not using internal Docker network, this command is not necessary, but I keep it here just in case if one day I want to go uh, to, the, to the other definition of the network or use uh, internal network, I can easily do by just ch uh, changing one command and this is not a uh, net command. Now we will define time zone. Since I live in Europe, I will type up Europe and capital here is Zagreb, I will also use Zagreb. Definition is usually done uh, with two variables. First one is the continent and second one is the largest city in your time zone next to you. Okay, so now we have defined network, name, restart, ports, time zone. Last two commands we have to enter is uh, mapping drives that we now created or that already exist on Synology device, such as this Home Assistant we created a couple of minutes ago, with the internal Docker uh, drive, uh, sorry, internal Docker folders. Okay, let's do it. First one, we will map the folder we just created. It's volume one, Docker, home assistant, and map it with the config configuration folder inside the Docker container. That way, when the Home Assistant Docker looks for configuration files inside its own uh, Docker, uh, sorry, inside its own configuration folder, it will be mapped to the locally available uh, folder on your Synology device. And next one, which is not needed, I don't see people do it very often, but will help you in the long run is to define uh, SSL certificate folder so that you can create, for example, let's encrypt certificate and secure your connections with this server. Okay, this one is a bit long. It's user, it's, you know, etc, certificate system default. This is the folder that is containing default let's encrypt certificate when it's available and now we will map it with the folder inside docker container called certificate and the last command on this command line is uh, giving order to a docker from what repository and what version of the software it needs to download since we are you going for a home assistant we will be typing home assistant and we will be using latest stable Docker for the Home Assistant. 
options here can vary. It, it can be Hasayo, it can be a beta channel. So there are a couple of options, but this options is recommended for the production environment on Synology, not running Hasayo. We have to enter password. Okay. And as you can see, the system is now downloading, extracting all the components of the Docker needed to run Home Assistant. I'll take a quick break here let, and let the system download all the necessary files. Docker has finished downloading all the files, extracting and installing them. And if everything is correct, we don't see any error, we can check uh, our installation if it's working or not. There are a couple of ways to check it and we will leave the most interesting part for the last. First of all, in this terminal is still open. We can go and change directory or change folder to home assistant and type it correctly. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, my bad. Okay. If the system has been installed, there will be some files, specifically files in regard to the configuration. As you can see, we have a couple of files, it automations, YAML. This file is used to define uh, automations in the system, configuration, group, scripts, database, and secrets, place where you want to keep all your pa uh, passwords and sensitive information. Next thing we want to check is a Synology browser or Synology file station inside the browser. We have seen this folder already. Let's enter it. And as you can see, those same files are here. Okay, the last step in checking the configuration of the uh, Home Assistant is to really try and open the window. Let me just close all those windows and I'll be back shortly. Let's go into the web browser. We have to add this port and type 8123 and press, press enter. Okay, and the system is installed. Next part is configuration of the Home Assistant. Uh, I will just do basic configurations here so we can see the system up and running. My name is Bearded Thinker. My username is Bearded. I will enter here password confirm it and press enter. Next, I will select home as a name. Okay, I will leave it as it is. I will leave this uh, location also in Amsterdam. Why not? They have nice coffee shops there. And I will select Europe Amsterdam for the time zone. No, I will not do it because Okay, I'm same time zone, no matter. Uh, I will put 100 meters elevation, which is not correct for Amsterdam, but more or less is correct where I live. And the units system will be left at metrics, so we're using Celsius and kilograms. And here we are presented with the options of the devices and or services that the system has found in your location. Since I am using the same network for Synology testing, environment as my real home network. It found some devices that I already have attached uh, and available. We will press here finish and that's it. As you can see, it's really easy and fast to install Docker container. And best of all, if we go into the system, a Synology system, we can check the amount of RAM and CPU this is using. And okay, just give me a second. And we are here. As you can see, the CPU is currently at 4%, RAM is 19%, but remember that we are also having some system applications that are not related to Docker inside of this uh, usage. Let's check here Docker. 
don't show this close let's go to images and see information about the image as i said we are using a uh, registry docker hub and down we have downloaded home assistant home assistant latest version and our container should be up and running and when we see that we are using around 1.5 percent of cpu power and around 165 megabytes of ram and that's it for today believe it or not the next episode I will be talking and guiding you through installation of two other components that I run. It's a watchtower. This component is in charge of keeping all your Docker containers up to the latest version. So it periodically checks the internet, see if there is any upgrade or update for your system, for your Dockers. If there is, it downloads it, installs it and keeps your orig original settings, not the ones in your uh, local folder those settings are permanent and yours to keep but I'm talking here about settings from the docker containers itself that long string that we have been typing for five minutes during the installation process and next system uh, next component I will be installing is called uh, called portainer this system is used to control docker containers to see the log files to stop them, start them, to see the configuration and to do more or less supervision and monitoring and editing of the Docker containers itself. And it's much, much better than this internal Synology Docker um, administrative model. As you can see here, there are a lot of things that you cannot do. For example, if you want to go into the uh, container here and change some of the parameters we have been putting in, for example, uh, ports using uh, hosts, those things you cannot do here. Uh, some of those changes can be done in Portainer, not all, but it's also not much nicer to look at. And this is it for today's episode, the first episode in the Home Assistant series. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, hit the like button and hit the bell button so you get notification of the new episodes. And I hope you will have a great time. See you next time. Bye-bye.